Amen. All right. We are in Proverbs chapter 12, verse 1. And uh, our first verse is become a should be a pretty familiar theme with you by now. But it's it amazes me how God keeps just uh, breaking down and it's a very sp smallest thing. I think he's into kindling almost on some of these subjects by now. He's getting down to the finite things that really hinder us or help us. And, uh, you know, the Bible says out of the heart flows every issue of life. So before, you're, before you're, it comes out of your mouth, it's already been meditated in your heart. You know, a lot of times people go, oh, I didn't mean to say that. No, you didn't mean to let me know that was in your heart. <laughs> would be usually a more accurate statement. Mm -hmm. And because and the only person you're fooling, though, sometimes is you. And, you know, we studied Sunday when we took communion. We had such an awesome time. Oh, Lord, if we examine ourselves, God doesn't have to, to examine us. Mm -hmm. So as we go through Proverbs, if you learn all this knowledge and you don't examine yourself... You're gonna, you're just gonna walk away from the mirror and be in worse shape than what you was before you showed up, right? Mm -hmm. Now, even me, I'm like, Lord, we've been on this for a year and a half. Well, I think we have established there's two paths. <laughs> there's a blessed path and there's a cursed path, and you get to decide. And you think the ones that decide to not follow you are a bunch of morons. <laughs> that is what I've got from your word. <laughs> Knuckleheads, blockheads, and he's called us all several names. <laughs> Amen? But do you know there's a difference between tolerating something and loving something? Mm -hmm. And most people in the body of Christ have learned to tolerate instruction and correction, but very few people love it. <laughs> and this next verse, we're going to talk, he, he, he doesn't say those that tolerate it, he says those that love it. And you learn to love it because if you realize what he's saving you from by it, you fall in love with it. If you realize when he's instructing you that he really is a good father, he's not just trying to take you to the whipping post, he's trying to save you from pain, strife, hurt, disappointment, and a whole huge mess, you'll love him for taking the time and speaking to you and guiding you through it. But here's the thing. No pastor can make you love instruction. And I can't beat you into submission. <laughs> And the Bible says it's the goodness of God that draws men to repentance. So that means you're going to have to see somebody take correction and see the benefits from it and come through it smiling. Big smile. And so and you, I would say we have a real lack of that in the world today. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. Of people that take correction with a good heart, a loving heart, and then say, man, look what God did. I'm so thankful. I, I mean, I don't know anybody that, I, I don't think love and enjoy is the same thing. I don't enjoy correction, but I love what it keeps me from. I love it that God loves me so much that he speaks to me before and doesn't wait till after. The enemy is the one that waits till after when he trips you up and he comes along and says, ha, ha, ha. You messed up. But God is wanting us to love it. Because if you love something, you don't resent it. You're quick to listen to it. Amen? Amen. And uh, on a whole other note, I feel the Holy Spirit speaking. I, I, I'm going to do something I don't really do, really do very much from the pulpit. I'm going I'm to uh, say a couple things about our country and some politics and uh, some things going on that need to be addressed. And wherever you stand in politics, uh, you, the kingdom of God is the most important thing you should be pressing forward. If you get caught up on either side of the nonsense, uh, then you're just a pawn for the enemy. That's my two cents. But uh, abortion is murder. But it's no different sin than any other sin. If you've had one, God will forgive you, wash you clean, and make you free from it. Amen? Amen. So we're not beating on people that's had it. We, we are, we are. I am upset with the, there is a demonic spirit that gets worship for every time a baby is murdered. It was, it was from the Old Testament, it's called Moloch, mm -hmm. and it's still here today. Same with those ones that get it through some of the things you watch on TV and other ones. I'm not going to go into, but we've seen them even talked about in the book of Proverbs. And so, 
you know, abortion is murder, and, and this country has murdered more people than, than Hitler did and the Nazis with babies right now. And today they just passed a law, actually started yesterday and today, where full-term births, if they're at full term, they're allowed to, to abort to kill them. Oh. And it's what and our and now our new governor that we have has just signed a bill into place to back it up to okay. that we're the, we're gonna we're gonna outdo New York in this state. Now I, I how many know we, I've prayed, I've took you all places, we've stood in the gap. I don't get involved in cliches, I don't get involved in people doing emotionalism. There's a lot of that that goes on and just to make you feel good for doing something. I don't agree with those things. I think if you can't pray about it in your prayer closet first, you have no business stand, stomping around doing something else. Mm -hmm. Please hear my heart in that. And I can show you where God's not allowed me to partake in so many because it has been pure emotionalism. Not because my heart wasn't there for the cause. Right. All right? Mm -hmm. But I'm here to tell you as a body of Christ, and we've prayed for this before. I can remember a prayer service we had at the old church. It was powerful. God had us set, behind, set aside a whole Saturday. Yeah. And we took turns praying. How many of you remember that? Mm -hmm. And things started, and you can look through the years, and you can see from that Saturday that one, some people, really, you think that had to? I believe God gave us all authority. Mm -hmm. You can see things that shifted in our state and community. How many can look back and see some of that now? And I believe that it's coming up soon. We should probably have another one where we pray and we stand in the gap. Because I don't know about you, but this is not okay with me as a man of God. This is not okay. Listen, I'm not here to argue with it. The Bible says we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers. I'm not going to go stand and shout with somebody in the streets. That's dumb as a box of rocks. I ain't going to change their mind. Come on, hear my heart. Are you with me? But me loving them, even when they're screaming at me, my. Are you hearing me? But even more than that, is we don't we wrestle with we wrestle with principalities and powers. And if you can't, you're going to have to get your, yourself prayed up in a place where we come, we can shake heaven. Because this is not okay with me. You don't hear me say very much. Not that I have any against it, but I believe the king. I believe saving souls is the most important thing in the in, in the world. And if I, you know, if I get you to heaven, it's way more important if I, than I convinced you who to vote for. Mm -hmm. And we've, as a church, we've put all our energy into that, and I'm still going to continue that. But to me, this is still about souls. Mm -hmm. These are souls that are crying out from, mm -hmm. from, the, from the land. Their blood is crying out. Mm -hmm. Is anybody going to do me justice? Now listen, it's just as much murder when it's two weeks old or when it's nine months old. But the idea that they're becoming okay with this. Listen, if, it, if it's homicide, and it is either way, but if it's the person who's charged with homicide, if they kill a mother and an unborn baby, they get charged for two counts of homicide. Mm -hmm. You're telling me a doctor can kill that baby and just because a mom said it's okay and it's fine. <coughs> this is leading us to, it, it's been leading us to depravity. It didn't start. I think I've spoken on this many years ago. I don't, when we had the other prayer meeting, you go all the way back into the 30s whenever America's morals started changing and things started coming in and we started embracing the culture more and more and more. Now, I'm not talking about we need to be dressed in skirts and buns on our head because some of those people have got some of the most atrocious prayer li uh, personal lives other because they're just hiding their sin. Now, we don't want to be whitewashed tombs, but I'm telling you, the church started saying it was okay. It was okay. You know, there, it's, you, can be, you can be holy and still be embrace the world, you know, be in the world but not of the world and, and have a standard of integrity. Mm -hmm. You know, I can love somebody without arguing with, listen, if they're, gonna, if they're bent on that's what they believe, I'm not going to change their mind by arguing. The Bible says stay away from vain ramblings. And that has how the church is trying to deal with it. The church wants to deal with it. They need to get holy enough and, and close enough to God in a revival place where they can pray and shake heaven and these things change. It'll change from the end so that the glory of God falls on them when they're in the same room with you and they get convicted. Not because what you said, but because who's in you. Amen. Amen. And that is what we need. That's the place we need to get to as a church. I can't do anything about any other church in America, but I am pastor over this church. And I take it very seriously. If y'all know me, I don't say these kind of things. I'm not an emotion. I, I, I'm not built on hype. I'm not, how many know where pastors talking about where I'm coming from? 
But church, it's time for us to say this is not okay. I'm not talking about going telling every co-worker tomorrow it's not okay. I'm talking about getting in our prayer closets, getting in our prayer room. We're going to get some, have some corporate prayer time together and say, God, this is not okay. We hear your heart and we hear your heart is breaking. Mm -hmm. And we're coming against this principality and power and we're saying you cannot have our city, you can't have our neighborhood, you can't have our community, and you can't have our babies. So many people are asking, well, where's this at? Where's that at? Some of them are in those wombs that were murdered. God has a future and a plan for every one of them. None of them was by accident. A lot of people say, well, what about their childhoods? Me and a whole bunch of other people didn't have the best childhoods. But you know what? God turned all that for his glory. Amen. Amen. And so, but see, the, you say, what's that got to do with this verse? Because none of those people love instruction. And every one of them are acting like an animal. Mm -hmm. And that's what this verse is talking about tonight. We're going to dig into it a little more, but that's what it's talking about. People that love instruction and ones that act like animals. Listen, here, here's the other thing. God was speaking to me earlier today. It really angered me. And I love animals. I, 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 don't ha I, I love them. I don't have, have them. I'm allergic to them. You know, I'm not, I might probably not as big as animal lover as a lot of people here, but I love animals. The Bible says a righteous man is kind to animals. Right. But here's the deal. People care more about what happens to a dog than what happens to those newborn babies. Yeah. Yeah. If you killed a dog that was pregnant, you'd be in prison. Mm -hmm. If you boarded all those puppies, you'd be in prison. Yeah. They, they do. They care more about animals than they do about human beings. And they think like animals. Mm -hmm. Now we could get all self-righteous, but self-righteous isn't going to solve the problem. No. Humility, love, holiness, and shaking heaven will. Yeah. So that we stay so full that when we come into a room, we're so full of the anointing of God that it starts convicting people around us. Not us convicting them with our words, but the anointing convicting them. Yeah. And start going, how can I be saved? How can I know this, Jesus? Oh, please forgive me. You have no idea what I was about to do. And so that is on my heart tonight. And it's, by the way, it's been on my heart for quite some time, and I've been praying about it. But I think we need to have some special prayer times, and we will. But how many think we need to be actively praying about it? Mm -hmm. Now, if you know me, I'm not the I'm not your cheerleader. I can be when I need to be, but I'm not going to come cheer you on every service. A lot of churches they do. I'm not going to say, "Are you praying? Are you praying?" Because that turns into emotionalism. Y'all follow, Pastor? If your heart is grieved, you'll act upon. I'm not your judge and jury. I'm not telling you if your heart is grieved or not. My heart is grieved. And I love God, and I'm going to act upon it. And I'm just saying, if you feel the same way, then join me. Amen? Amen. All right. The most politics you've probably heard in here in a long time. Amen. Or ever. Or ever. Or ever. And to me, it ain't really politics. It's still, it's still kingdom work. Yep. You know, but uh, I don't know J.P. Pritzker. I wasn't a Rainer, Rainer fan. He sold us out on the abortion thing himself. And I don't believe any of them can solve this problems in this state. I don't believe, I don't even like Donald Trump's attitude, but I like the things God's using him for. Amen. I don't know, I, I ain't my job to decide if he's saved or not saved, but I, what I started to say about Pritzker is that he, you can tell he's fully aligned himself with things that are demonic. Now, here's the thing. No national man is going to save this state. Only Jesus. Because if you get people sold out on fire to Jesus, they stop trying to look at things to how it affects their community. How about we're all in the same boat? We all should be brothers and sisters in Christ. We all should be people chasing after Jesus. When you do that, then that anointing changes people from the bottom up. Ain't nothing ever changed from the top down. Are y'all, I guess I'm talking about the most politics you'll hear. But, you know, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, and he's done a very good job of dividing America. 
I've been very happy with Broken Chains Church. We're not the largest, but there, when you walk into this church, it's about unity. There, you don't feel any kind of divisions. I don't believe in any way. It all just goes out the window, and I hope hopefully all you feel is love. Isn't that how, isn't that how God's supposed, isn't it supposed to be that way across the nation? And that's what God's calling us to do as a body of believers. Amen? Because they're not going to save us. But I said all that because we, we do need to be praying because the enemy's going to use Pritzker to really uh, bring in some horrible things upon this state. And the thing is, is that people, people vote with their pocketbook. They always have. So they vote about how it affects them the most instead of voting with their morals. And the moral compass needs to come from God. Amen. You all with me? So... You'll say, well, Pastor, you should have spoke to us about all this. We didn't have anybody worth voting for this year. So we prayed. And listen, the Bible says that hands of the kings, their hearts are in God's hands. And whosoever he willeth will rule. So we're reaping right now what we've sowed as a state. We're reaping right now what we've sowed as a country. God has in charge exactly who he wants in charge. And until we change our hearts and change how we pray and change how we do things, that's the only way to change. The Bible says those people are called by my name and they will repent. I will come and heal their land. Whenever uh, Jonah showed up, whenever you see each time somebody showed up and to judge a nation, the only time that nation was saved when that nation repented in turn and put all their focus back on the Lord. And that comes only with people that get hungry for God. Somebody has to say, it's time to have a solemn fast. It's time to have a time of turning. I didn't expect to preach all this tonight. But are you with me? Do you hear my heart? Amen. And I just, enough's enough. I, I, I'm dumbfounded. I'm sick. I'm literally sick inside that people can think that that's okay to do that to babies. And I guarantee you, if any of them ever let that baby get out of the womb and heard it cry, everything would change. Mm -hmm. And the things I've seen and the things I've heard, real documented things, I, I have a liberty to see a lot of things, unfortunately, that people think I need to see it. They get sent to me, but things they do to babies and stuff, would just it would just break your heart. Mm -hmm. So we need to pray, amen. Okay, Lord. So whoso loveth instruction, loveth knowledge. So if you love instruction, that means you love wisdom because you know wisdom is going to keep you from a mess, right? Amen. But he that hateth reproof is brutish. I, You know, when I was a young Christian, I used to read this. It's funny how you do things. Does anybody remember what uh, Popeye's friend was? Brutus. Brutus. So when I would read Brutish, I would think of Brutus. Yeah. And I'd think that, I think that's what they're acting like right there. They're acting like that dumb Brutus guy. <laughs> and in some ways, they are. I'll go a little deeper for you than that. <laughs> You'll never forget that now. Don't act like Brutus. Whoever loves discipline loves knowledge, but one who hates correction is stupid. <laughs> now, I didn't call you stupid, but God did. If you hate, if you listen, if you hate correction, you're stupid. Now, listen, as I was studying this week, I got to tell you, I was an old biker. You probably don't know that. You know, and you just, so I'm like, look at you again, Pastor. I think you're averting here lately. Your beard's <laughs> no, but uh, <laughs> bikers are uh, are some of the most rebellious people, rebellious spirited, and the whole time period that I came from there, you know, I can remember. And this is a horrible song. It's demonic. Please don't. But you know, they're quiet. Right? Used to sing. I'm not going to take it. You know, yeah. they can hear all these songs, and we were every one of them was talking about uh, not conforming to any kind of authority, and that was the that is still the culture in the world, and and that was what elevated. The more rebellious you were, the more cool you were. Does anybody remember that? Yeah. How many how many know it's still going on today? Except for the lyrics, it just got very much more profane, talking about killing cops and doing all these other things, and they're rebellious. 
It's a spirit of rebellion. And it's rapid. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's not cool to be the one that loves knowledge. Because when you start figuring out what the Word says, you want to start conforming to it, right? Mm -hmm. So, but, you know, most of those people that are dumb as a box of rocks think they're the smartest individuals <laughs> in the world. They've got it all figured out and you can't tell them nothing. I've been there. Listen, I'm talking about myself. I'm not smacking on somebody else. And there's another one that says, if you love learning, you love the discipline that goes with it. How many have started to learn to love the when you've started learning to how many have started learning to love learning? Hopefully if you come to this church that passion has caught on. I mean, we we'll preach on Sunday, and I believe we have a really good teaching ministry on Wednesdays. And I'm not trying to brag on myself. I just believe there's anointing here. Because a lot of times people never had anybody break it down for them where they could understand it. So they never, all the, Lord help me, Holy Ghost. Unfortunately, for years, we had people that tried to make themselves look smart instead of trying to help people be smart. Yeah. And so then they, they missed the whole loving of learning. Because it was laborious to try to figure out what somebody else was trying to say using things that, anyways, you get what I'm trying to say. That's what the Lord showed me. But when you start really learning to love learning, you realize that it's for your benefit instead of being resentful, you become thankful. Right? Right. And he said uh, with it, how short-sighted to refuse correction. See, if you're short-sighted about refusing correction, you're not looking at the long haul, you're looking at the short time. What's going on right now. And in order to really start learning to love correction and learn loving the Word of God, you're going to have to start looking at the long haul of things, not the short haul, not what's going on in the moment. In the moment, it's always better not to get a spanking. In the moment, it's always better to have it your way. But God's not Burger King. Whosoever loveth correct, correction loveth knowledge, but he that hateth reproof, reproof is brutish. Who so loveth discipline loves knowledge, but he that hates reproof is stupid. I mean, didn't he know he was going to offend people by calling them stupid? He said, give no offense and take no offense. Is God trying to offend people now? No. No. But see, here's what's happened today. The enemy's tried to has convince people that telling the truth is offensive. And he's convinced that you can't receive that because he said, take no offense and give no offense. So the Lord is just stating the truth. If the truth is offensive, the problem's with the person receiving it, not with the person giving it, as long as it's given in love. Right. And now how many, know, how many know that God is the God of love? Mm -hmm. So he could not do anything but present it in a way up front from love, right? Mm -hmm. So if you have a problem with that, it's, not, it's with you, not with the person giving it. But what's happened today is that we've said that the truth is offensive. Do you all see where pastor's coming from? Yeah. And so whosoever loves knowledge but he hates your proof is stupid. He said it, He said that three times in a different way. Every translation is going. Now, does anybody here like being called stupid? No. But how many are with me that you could look back and say, man, when I hated your proof, I was stupid. I got myself in a mess. Amen. I wish somebody would have told me. Anyone who loves knowledge wants to be told when they are wrong. Now, see, here's the thing. Because any man go, he'll say, well, because I love to be told. I, I, I love knowledge and I want to really be told when I'm wrong. Now, I don't always enjoy being wrong, but I love that God had loved me enough to tell me. Mm -hmm. And so, so many times the enemy, he tries to get down into the details that he knows are half-truths and twist it. He'll like, look, well, you really didn't love that correction. I loved what it saved me from. Mm -hmm. No, I didn't love getting busted, but I loved what it saved me from. It is stupid to hate being corrected. Now, can we just be honest for a moment tonight? In the world today, is it politically correct 
uh, to love being corrected. Is it is it politically correct to hate being corrected? Today it's politically correct. Everybody, if you don't hate somebody that's trying to correct you some way, then if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. <laughs> Except for the only thing you're standing for is whatever you supposedly think is right, and you know, unless it's the word of God, you know. But most people are not standing when they quote that. Most of them are not quoting the word of God. Are you with me? Not saying you can't. The same most. Stupid to hate being corrected. Whosoever loves instruction loves knowledge, but he who hates correction is like a brute animal. You ever seen an old horse? What do you got to do to get him to go where you want? Break them. Break them. Do they receive that correction easily? <laughs> I mean, you're, you can eventually get them where you want them to go, but it takes a lot of work. I mean, you ever tried to break a Missouri mule? You'd swear that at that time they were some of the stupidest animals God ever made. But then once you finally break them, they're some of the most loyal animals you ever have. They'll follow you wherever you go. Brutish, I have a definition here for you. Dumb as a brute beast, the difference between man and brute lies chiefly in the capacity of the former for progress and improvement. That capacity depends on his willingness to submit to discipline and education. So, see, as, as men and women of God, we have the ability to submit and learn from things where an animal usually responds the same time, same way every time until he's finally, his pain levels got too high. Mm -hmm. We have the ability to learn from somebody else so we don't even have to experience it. Mm -hmm. We can read the Word of God and learn from it and not have to go through it. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? But you know, I'm, I've, you know people, let, let's, take it, let's take it down even more simpler tonight. The Holy Ghost is going to give me trouble. Uh, what is one thing when you first get saved that everybody tells you, don't pray for this? Patience. Patience. That's one of the dumbest statements I've ever heard. Yeah. Let's just be honest. It's dumb as a box of rocks because you're saying, I don't want to learn from nothing. I just want it my way. I want, you know, and you know what? Praying for patience, you know, it, it's a... Uh, if you want, Patience means that you've got to learn to deal with some things and apply the Word of God. And if you think just because you ain't praying for it, it ain't going to happen, you're dumb as a box of rocks. <laughs> Why? Because God loves you. And he's taking, he wants to change your character and your integrity to look more like him. So it's the goodness of God that draws people to repentance. Now it's his goodness he wants to draw you. If you seen the benefit of patience, you would be happy to go for it. You would love the correction it took to get there. Because if you ain't got no patience, you're going to be like a brute animal. But everybody goes around, but don't pray. I've gotten to the point where I just have to release the, I have to resist the urge. The spirit of slap comes on me sometimes. And I'm like, you're just messing people up with all that stupid old stuff. Don't pray for patience. Oh yeah, don't don't receive any correction. Just going to be like a dumb animal. Wait till he gets painful, he jerks the bit this way, or wait till he gets painful, he jerks the bit that way. He said, my, my secret to you, I want to share with my friends, I want to guide him with my eye. That means you've learned to listen so well, you're in tune with the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ through his word so much that his word is where the, he's going just barely turning his eye, you're in unity with him, and there's nothing painful about it. But if you're still, if you're still, I don't want no patience, Lord, just blah, blah, blah. He's having to jerk you around. Yeah. It didn't stop you from going through it. It just made you stay in it longer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? This is the heart. You know, Lord, just take this cup from me. Lord, I, this thing is just too hard for me. 
Yeah, well, I ain't even started nothing yet. <laughs> it's just you and your 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 integrity. <laughs> I was just trying to patch the hole so I could start pouring something in. <laughs> <laughs> A good man obtaineth favor of the Lord, but a man of wicked devices will he condemn. Now, how many wants to listen? These verses, for how many? This says that it, listen. If you do these things, it doesn't say you might obtain. No. What's it say? No. You will obtain. Listen. Do you understand that if you have the favor of God, that unmeasurable favor, that favor that turns everything your way, mm -hmm. someone say, man. They're just lucky. No, I'm favored. <laughs> everything just always turns out all right for you. Did it say everything always went right for you? No, it said everything turns out right for you. Why? Because I'm favored. I'm blessed and highly favored. Man, woman of God. Amen. It says, so would God tell you that you can obtain favor if it was impossible for you to obtain it? But to obtain it, you've got to love correction. Now, how many people go, I tried that God thing. It didn't work for me. Yeah, yeah I bet you was the one over there praying, not praying, saying, Lord, keep don't let no patience. <laughs> no instruction, no correction. Don't grow me at all, God. Just bless me. <laughs> it sounds silly when I say it, but how many know it is the truth? The good person obtains the favor from the Lord, but he condemns a man who schemes. You ever seen somebody that schemes, always working on the next plan? I mean, by the time one thing fails, they're already working on another way to scheme their way out of that mess. How many know it's the natural way of things if you don't let the Spirit of God in? Amen? Amen. A good person basks in the delight of God. He wants nothing to do with devious schemers. It means he trusts God with all his heart. He knows God is for him. Amen. He's walk, walk, working all things out for good that are called according to his purpose. How good does that sound? Yeah. Now listen. Some people, the devil, ha you know what? The devil has a golden tongue, in case you didn't know it. I mean, he talked one, uh, I forget, one third or two thirds of the angels of heaven one third, and, and to, so that's what I thought, to, to turn against the guy that made them. You can't tell me he ain't got a liquid tongue, mm -hmm. a gold. I mean, he, he can sugarcoat talk anybody. He's been doing it since the beginning of time. And so does his people for him. And he can get, if, if your heart's not right, he can get you to fall for some of the dumbest stunts that ever walked. Mm -hmm. And you'll be thinking you're getting blessed. Yep. How many of you know they didn't leave heaven thinking they was going to get kicked out? They didn't go, here, I want to spend all my time the rest of my life in hell. Let me join you. So that's not how the enemy, some people wait for the enemy to show up with a pitchfork, you know, and pointed ears and, and it's like, come follow me, I want to make you evil. Instead, he's the guy that shows up with a big smile and everything's right. He, you know, he, he's, he's, the, he's the best used car salesman you've ever met. He can talk you into anything with a smile and paint it all so good, you know. And you believe him hook, line, and sinker. The only way you don't is if you're full of the word of God because you'll see he's full of holes. And you'll chase after God. Are you all with me tonight? A good man will attain favor of Jehovah, but a man of wicked devices he condemns. How many want to be condemned of God? Now, that means all those people do you think are that are getting by with all those schemes that look like they're and see here's the difference the enemy's even he's even got people's minds so polluted that their idea of blessed and God's idea of blessed two separate things mm -hmm. and so people get jealous and hurt because they think somebody's getting blessed and here they're serving God not getting nothing when they have no idea what the blessings of God really are because they think just because this person has money it makes them blessed and all those things only last for a season, by the way. And they're already all miserable. Listen, we're, my, my things I'm chasing after, they're worth far more than money. 
the glory of God is worth full, far more than anything that he could even try to tempt me with upon this earth. Amen. That doesn't mean he called me to be a pauper. That's right. You know, I, I, didn't, I didn't take a vow of poverty when I became a minister, even though sometimes the devil tried to convince me I did. <laughs> But and he did. I, I'm telling you the truth, and I, but I've decided I'm not. I, I'm blessed and highly favored, Amen. man of God. You know, he said he'd provide all my needs according to his riches and glory. He said the just shall live by faith. All I have to do is keep my heart right, stay stay humble and easy to correct. Amen. Amen. Now that doesn't always come easy, does it? Some people go, I just feel like all he's wanting to do is correct me. Well, then I would say, you probably have a really stiff neck right now. You are probably stiff necking it. That means you're not you're kind of resistant to it and it's starting to pile up, so you need to hurry it up. Come on, are you? how do you know that? Well, how do you think I know it? I've been through it. I've learned to respond quicker. And listen, there's no there's no shame in the game as long as you're responding. The shame is if you're uh, you you've realized that you're uh, falling into some schemes. You know, are you with me? Amen. The Lord is pleased with good people, but He condemns those who plan evil. Can you get much more plainer than that? The good obtain grace from Jehovah. Now, grace it does what? And overcome. Okay. overcome, empowers you to change. I was thinking back today uh, in this week about, you know, if we if we were God and we judged each person at where they were at on their journey with God, how we thought they should be. If you had met me when I had first gave my heart back to God, some of you might even question if I was saved at all. <laughs> Now, I was just as much saved then as I am now, but if I tried to do now what I did then, I'd go straight to hell. Now, was I drinking and things? No, I've told you I, I gave up all those things. But the thing was, is God's grace was empowering me and changing me over that course of time. And the people around me knew that, knew that and left me to God to grow me up. Now, some people, some people submitted sooner to the correction and instruction, and they might have grown faster in some areas than me. But see, his, some people, his grace is sufficient. Didn't mean his grace was sufficient to just keep me covered in a mess. His yeah. grace was sufficient to empower me to change. Where I'm nowhere near recognizable compared to that person. But I was, think, I was just thinking today, man, Lord, your grace was so good. You know, if I, if I met that guy today, I'd probably smack him and say, don't be stupid. And I was as saved then as I am now. I have no doubt in my heart because I really love God and I was trying with all my heart to do what was right according to the knowledge that I knew and reading of the Word. But I didn't. But once I found out about an open door, once I found out about things, I responded to it. I didn't just keep the door open. Right. You know, the minute the minute He really truly convicted me of smoking, I quit. Now. Do I believe I would have made heaven at that point in time? But listen, I believe a lot of Christians that listen are not going to make heaven because they're smoking because they know it's been a sin for a long time. They've chose to stay in it and it opened up 20 other doors in their mm -hmm. life and they just became a walking gate for the devil. Big smile. Come on, are you hearing me? Yep. But when I was, you say, what's the difference? The difference was our heart and where God's grace was at. When he convicted me, I said, yes, sir. Now, was it wrong when I was doing it? Yes, it was wrong. But he hadn't dealt with me on that yet. He'd take me to a place. You'll say, why is it wrong for you and wrong for this? It was wrong, period. But his grace was sufficient at the time to cover me so I wasn't judged for the sin that I was in. It was still sin because he was bringing me up and out of the sin because I was responding to his correction. Amen. Amen. So he gave me unmerited favor during that time and I responded and he brought me out. I hope everybody's following me because a lot of people get that so confused. And so I'm so thankful that, I, you know, if, if I was that guy now, I'd split hell wide open. Now, you know, but I think I'd have made heaven, I'd just smell like hell. <laughs> Big smile. And if you're still smoking, I ain't picking on you. I'm trying to tell you how God was talking to me this week about this subject. Amen.
Amen. So I'm sharing my own life. And so, so I'm so thankful that His grace was, but how many know His grace didn't leave me there? Amen. And it still hasn't left me there. It's still calling me up. And, uh, yeah. you know, but because if I would have tried to scheme how to stay in it, you know, I've known people in other denominations, they preaching and smoking and all kinds of dumb stuff. I'm just like, are you kidding? And then the people that are dumb enough to sit there and listen to them. If I'm offending you, you should be. Because it should offend you that people are treating the gospel of Jesus Christ that way. Because it is something to be holy. Amen. Sanctified, set apart. Amen. Preachers are going to be judged twice as hard when we get to heaven. I want to be accountable for every person that can come in contact, contact. Their blood is going to be upon my hands. Mm -hmm. I take it very serious. If my life's out of line, it's affected somebody <laughs> else's, whether they did right or wrong, it's still going to be on me if I was the one in wrong doing something that they, anyways. Moving along. Are you seeing the difference between someone, see he said obtained grace. That means they obtained favor. They obtained that unmerited favor. They obtained that thing that caused them to respond to the correction that caused them to come up. You see, that was an all how they responded to it. Whenever he convicted me for smoking, I had to respond to it. And I did. And it caused me to come up. Or I could have said, well, Lord, everybody else and their brother's doing it. What's it hurting? And I would have stayed bound by it. And then I would have had to scheme and keep trying to make ways to, to prove it was okay. Y'all with me? Mm -hmm. Verse 3. A man shall not be established by wickedness by the root of the righteous, but the root of the righteous shall not be moved. So that means as long as you're not right with God, you're going to be like you're on sifting sand or shifting sand. But how many remember there's a tree that's planted where? By living water. On the house on the rock, but there's, a, there's a tree planted by a living water and it shall not be moved. How many know when you get in the Holy Spirit and you get your roots going down deep and you start receiving correction and start letting the things of God change you, you become unmovable to the things of this world. But, so a, a man cannot be made secure by wickedness. Now, do we really need God to tell us this or should we just already know this? Some people need to hear it. <laughs> I, that's, that's why I asked him that question, just like I asked you, and that's what he got me. He's like, I wouldn't have put it in there if some people didn't, didn't yeah. have a come to Jesus moment. So, but the root of the righteous is immovable. Now, did it say it's sometimes immovable? So, that doesn't matter what comes against you. If you stay in Christ, <laughs> you are immovable. That means nothing can take you out of the Father's hand as long as you stay where? In Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, I can't make you stay in Christ. I can't make you do what is right. Well, there's a whole map you can follow where it, it, it ought to be starting to become very evident that it's not difficult. Amen? You can't find firm footing in a swamp. <laughs> I love that. Anybody ever been in a swamp? Nope. <laughs> you ever had your boots sucked off in the swamp? Oh my God. <laughs> you get down there, you're like, <laughs> you know, when you're trying to get it out. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. It's no fun, is it? And, and so, you know, he says that you can't, and you can't find nothing. You're just trying to stay moving enough so you don't get permanently stuck. Anybody else been there? <laughs> Looking for something solid somewhere and there's nothing. Can you imagine that's literally what it's like when we're trying to do this life in our own strength? But life rooted in God stands firm. 
I've seen a, if you ever been out, anybody ever been out west very much and you see those old pine trees and they'll be up on the side of a mountain and their roots, you'll see them going in deep and they go wherever they can find. They find their way into the rock and into the water and they'll stand there and I mean, 60 mile an hour winds will come, everything will move and that tree is just um, immovable. And the most, you know, obscure places, the most desolate places, it's thriving. It's rooted. And while God would always speak to me when I'd see those places. He said, that's what it's like if you stay in me. It doesn't matter in your surroundings. I will keep you rooted. And so, uh, a man shall not be established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous shall not be moved. Now listen, this ought to bring, bring you comfort tonight. We're going through, listen, how many, you know, sometimes the enemy starts telling you he's going to move you all over the place. You know, he's like the big bad wolf. I'm going to huff and puff and blow your house down, you know. And if your house is like some of those built on sinking sand, it may crumble. Yeah, or some of the others that's not really firm in God, they're going to crumble. We could read that verse. But uh, if you stay in God and stay humble to his correction, you're not going to be moved. No one is established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous will never be moved. A man should not be established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous should not be moved. Wickedness <laughs> does not give security, but righteous people stand firm. Now, here's here that is a very good key I don't want you to miss. How many like security? Amen. Now, how many know, listen, how many knows it takes faith and hope, confidently anticipating to have security in Christ. Mm -hmm. You really got to know that he is who he said he is and can do what he said he can do. Mm -hmm. But when you do, you become secure in that, mm -hmm. no matter what comes your way. A man shall not be established by wickedness, but by the root of the righteous shall not be dislodged. That means no matter how hard the enemy tries, just think about that tree up on the side of that cliff. No matter what it's tried, that tree is standing against all eternity. Isn't that awesome? I might as well go ahead and do verse 4 and see if I can get in trouble before I go home. A virtuous woman is a crown to her husband, but she that maketh it ashamed is as rottenness in his bones. Do you know that the... That I'm going to go ahead and go a step further. In old time, they would determine how a man's character and how close he was to God by how his wife did things in the community. Do you want me to tell you, women, that it still goes on today? Mm -hmm. And if someone's not... Uh, now listen, submission is not slavery. Right. But submission is also not a dirty mm -hmm. word. Because God did, he, the, nobody wants to talk about him, but God did set up a head of the household on purpose because he made men to be able to carry loads that, that ladies were never supposed to carry. If you have to carry that by yourself, uh, what God has showed me throughout the years, I have a mother that did it, that he is the he is the head of the household. He's carrying the load for you, and he will give you the instructions. But there's certain things that women were meant to carry that men were never supposed to carry that we can't carry. And there was things that the man was supposed to carry. When people learn to do that, they submit to one another and flow in that thing together. And if the husband makes a mistake, you know what? He's the one, God is the one that's supposed to deal with him, not, not the lady. Oh, I mean, come on. But most of the time, a lot of times anymore, people don't want to submit. So they want to make all the decisions and then they expect the husband to, to help clean it up. And move on, and God's saying, I can't bless any of this. I'm talking real straight tonight, I know. But so a virtuous woman is a crown to her husband. How many know God wants, listen, He wants the goodness of God. We, everybody likes to talk about being a walking billboard for God. If you become married, married and marriage is a, you know, I, I have a book I'm reading, I'll talk about it sometime later. But uh, He said, people have gotten the, marriage concept from God totally miscued. He says marriage isn't about making about being happy, it's about holiness. Because marriage is about making each other more holy, not always about making each other happy. 
says two shall, be, two shall become one. You should spur each other on to good works. Mm -hmm. That means you're making your God is using you to perform deeper things in each other's lives. Come on, are you with me? Amen. But uh, so a virtuous woman is a crown to her husband. That means that people should see that person as a blessing to them. Is something that adds value. To, not that you're any less or different, but it should be that add that adds super value to you. Like when they look at when they look at getting that team, they're like, we just don't get the one, we get the other. It's a super deal. Mm -hmm. Do you follow what I'm saying? But she that maketh a shame. Now listen, there's a lot of people today that they want to. It's all so self-centered that they make each person's making the other one more ashamed than the other one, and it's rottenness to the bones. It will kill that relationship, and it'll kill those individuals. Mm -hmm. And the Satan is using this tool over and over again today in marriages and relationships. Mm -hmm. I'm preaching real straight tonight. A capable wife is her husband's crown, but a wife who causes shame is like rottenness in his bones. Now, did it say the perfect wife? No. A virtuous one is one that is heeding to God and following his correction, mm -hmm. right? We're all growing, right? Remember what I said? God just for a capable wife is one that is 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 a heeding to God. That is when God deals with them is is going to those things that He's showing her and growing in those things. Amen, and and that means that that it becomes, it means that the wife edifies the husband. It makes the husband look better, and together the wife, the, the husband gives the the wife a place to shine as the beautiful thing that God has made her to be, so that she stands out to everybody else. Are you with me? So a hearty wife invigorates her husband. I said I was going to get in trouble. I've talked about all the other things. Uh, the, this should be true all the way through. <laughs> but a frigid woman is a cancer in the bones. Uh, so you should be you, you should uh, you you should light your your husband's fire. If you're frigid, it's good. the enemy. The, there's a reason why the Bible. I'm going to go in and talk about it. The kids are here. I'll try to talk about it in a PG way. There's a reason why the Bible says there's only one time to abstain, and that's in prayer and fasting. Mm -hmm. So otherwise, you give a place open to the enemy, and that's not just a good. Uh, that's just not a happy thought. Listen, if you're if you're single, I'll tell you the difference is because God's given you grace to be single during this time, and you're not you're you're not laying against around with somebody else that's going to stir those things up. Are you following that? You can stay off by yourself and stay pure. I'm trying to be PG. But when you're married, you're with somebody and those things are going to become stirred up even if you don't want them to. Uh, are you with me? I'm trying to talk real straight here. So, uh, but there's only one time to refrain. And that's uh, if you're going to be praying and fasting. It says you have to even then be in agreement. Otherwise, he says, if you don't, you're going to open the door for them. It didn't say you might. It didn't say that you could. It said you will. And the enemy uses this to, in marriages all the time because people think they have a right to withhold. And the Bible says there's only one time. It says your body's not your own because you're supposed to be serving each other. Am I talking real straight now? Mm -hmm. and, and listen, God wouldn't have put it in the Word if it wasn't things we didn't need to be taught on. And I'm trying to do it real PG. So, moving along, everybody says, praise God. <laughs> An excellent wife is the crown of her husband, but she who brings shame is like rottenness in her bones. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you think people, now I know I've met some people that wanted to bring shame, but most people aren't trying to be. They just aren't keeping all the doorways closed and are being used as a tool from the enemy. And it's used to disrupt and break things down. Y'all following me? A worthy woman is the crown of her husband, but a disgraceful wife is as rottenness in his bones. I think I've touched on it enough. I'll move on. A good wife is her husband's pride and joy. Now see what I'm saying? He'll, man, he'll, listen. 
And you know, I didn't say the perfect wife. He said a good wife, one that's trying, one that's doing. Listen, the, the marriage. Listen, marriage is God's idea. He's coming back for a bride, and our marriage relationships should re emulate the, the marriage of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and what we're having there. They should emulate that mm -hmm. in our lives. And so, you know, I'm, he's coming back for a bride without spot or wrinkle, and he's able to do that because we stay in him. And we're, he can, we can, you can have a good wife as long as you're being, it's all tied together, as long as you're uh, following after the correction, taking correction. It didn't say you would never need correction. It said you would listen to correction. Mm -hmm. But so many times people have put such a spirit of perfection upon it. It's, there's a difference between perfection and integrity. Integrity says you take correction easily and you change your course. Perfection says you never do nothing wrong. And people get the two misconstrued all the time. Especially if one person is trying to look for the other one to be perfect and themselves are just trying to have integrity, it's going to cause some really big heartaches. Yeah. So a good wife is her husband's pride. That means he's happy to sport her around and show her off. Look at my wife. But you, but you wish you had one like her. But a wife who brings shame on her husband is like a cancer in his bones. And it literally means it will eat him from the inside out. And the enemy will use that to destroy him. And so that also leads me to all you uh, single ladies and men in the room tonight. It means it's careful to, you need to marry the person God has intended for you and not yeah. get in a rush. Mm -hmm. Even if the enemy, the enemy is great. Listen, when I, I, had, I had an older lady in our church and she, she really helped me all through the years that I was single, you know, but you, you need to marry who God has, not just get married. Because anyone start telling, well, your clock is ticking. He'll tell you you got 20 different clocks that are ticking. And time is passing. And you're going to miss everything. And you're going to miss this. And you're going to miss that. And listen, the only thing you're missing is what God has for you in that moment because you're too busy listening to numb, stupid. I'm going to say knucklehead, numbskull. All right? And so... Uh, a woman of virtue is a crown to her husband, but one causing shame is like rottenness in her bones. Now, listen, I didn't write this book, but if it's in the Word of God, I think it's important that we talk about it. So we've talked about it openly tonight. We've drawn it out. And I, I, listen, I, I could have spent three months on that one subject, but I, I pray you took something away from it. Amen? Uh I think I'll go ahead and wrap up. It's still early tonight. I've seen everybody looking at their clocks. I guess y'all are tired. Just, but, well, yeah, 8.15. Usually get done at 8.30. But we'll uh, wrap up as long as y'all talk a lot. Feed back to me. What did y'all get from tonight? Sister Heather. When you love instruction, you don't resent it. You love it. Amen. Good stuff. Somebody else. Sister Ron. Receive instruction, don't be stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Good stuff, Sister Rebecca. There's a difference between tolerating and loving. You need to learn to love correction. <laughs> Amen. Good stuff, Sister Rebecca. Um, in order to obtain the favor of God, you have to love instruction and correction. Amen. Amen. Isn't that good stuff? Sister Sean. Amen. Good mm -hmm. stuff. So, did I see your hand, Pastor Tammy, all ago or not? Okay. Frankie. I need to love him. Well, actually, all of us do, but uh, I'm actually keeping up for myself. I love God with all my heart and all my soul and all my sin. You know, I have to know that I can't rely on you. Amen. Amen. Good stuff. Thank you. Sister Bonnie. I know where you went once. When we were talking about favor, I was thinking about Joseph, even though he had so many things that came at him. I mean, he was thrown into a pit, he was put in prison, he was accused of rape, and I mean, all kinds of things. And it didn't say that things didn't come at him, but he still walked in favor. Everywhere he went, he was given authority over things because they saw a God in him. Amen. Amen. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Even in the prison, he was put over yeah. other prisoners. Yeah. 
that's uh, true. I studied it out this week. I just didn't get it out tonight. So uh, thank you for bringing that out. Sister Rebecca. It empowers you to overcome and change. Amen. Who wants to go next? Pastor Tammy, you look like you're ready to go. <laughs> To love it, not tell her. Amen. Anybody else? Going once. Don't be a Brutus. <laughs> That's right. Don't be a Brutus. Be careful what you pray for. I guess, yeah. As long as you're... When we were talking about patience, um, <clears throat> it's been, like, if you see the benefit of patience, you'd love the effect it will have on you. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really thankful that I'm way more patient man than I used to be and you all should I be too. We are too. <laughs> <laughs> you all should be happy I didn't resent that one. We were praying for it for you. <laughs> when you when your roots go deep and your love really goes to correct you, you become immovable. Amen. Good stuff. You know, there's a reason why God made this so plain. It's you know, you might think, well, man, Pastor, are we going to spend years on the same subject? Maybe, maybe not, but I'm like, he, you know, he went into great detail on each one of these things, and I believe I believe it's for a reason to help us in this life now. You know, all, all of Proverbs is mostly about this life. It's about living this life to your best. That's one thing that's so great about it. It's about wisdom that you can use right now. Not tomorrow, not the next day. Right now, you can put every one of these things to use. And they'll forever change you. You know, I... Uh, in a worthy, in a capable, and a virtuous woman... Those are all things that are decided from the Word of God, not people's opinions. Everybody would have a different opinion about what that was. But the Word of God's pretty plain. That can either free you up or beat you up, depending on which side of the coin you want to be on. Big smile. But, men, I also want to point out here on that that uh, he wants you to take delight when God's given you a gift and when your bride is performing those things he wants you to show them off he wants you to be proud of them he wants you to, to uh, take notice that they're doing those things somebody say well there's only a few married couples in the house there's a whole world watching trust me it wasn't just for our benefit tonight here. There's a lot more other marriage couples out there that's going to hear this. And so, you know, some people say, well, he's just preaching to one or two of you. So, maybe I was. But, uh, you know, I, I, the, the Word of God has a lot to say about these subjects, and I think it's time we, the church, took a real good look at them and lived them out. Amen. And see, it's, and I also want to point this out. It's possible to have these kind of talks without embarrassing and being crude, rude, or lewd. You know, I know a lot of people have went that way, and I don't believe that that's from God either. I believe you can talk about things and still be respectful and honorable and discreet. And where everybody knows what you're talking about, and it's still PG. Amen. All right. Pastor Tammy, would you come up and close us in prayer tonight? Thank you all for coming tonight. Love you all. We'll see you Sunday. Lord willing, and the creeks don't rise. Tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow for <laughs> overcomers. For those, we'll...
Love you all. Love you too. We'll see you guys Thursday night, 7 o'clock, and then Sunday morning. Nice. Um, <laughs> and let's pray. Lord God, we just thank you for tonight, for the wisdom nuggets, Lord, and um, Lord, for teaching us, uh, Lord, just how to walk in um, the right path, Lord, to love your word, to love correction and discipline, and Lord, that it brings knowledge and understanding, God. So we thank you for that, and Lord, we choose this day to walk in your ways, and to love your ways, and to love your commandments, God, and um, thank you for pouring it into us tonight, Lord, and continue to have your way in our lives through this week, in Jesus' name. We all said, Amen. Amen. Amen.